Hello, everyone, and welcome to another spooktacular edition of the Mac Brothers podcast. John, it's Freaky Friday yet again. Freaky Friday part two. Uh, Tuesday's Halloween. So we decided to um, put a, a couple lists, different lists together, do something a little different. So last week we reviewed uh, Talk to Me featuring Zatch Beggles. Um, and this week we're reviewing some of our favorite uh, spooky songs or just songs that remind us of the holiday. Um, they don't, they're not really Halloween songs, I would say, because then it would be like I Put a Spell on You by Scoopski and, um, you know, uh, I'm Batman by the 1940s. They would be the ones we pick. So we just tried to make it not exactly on the nose, but still, still kind of spooky ish songs by some of our favorite artists. So these are all songs, uh, five songs each that we picked that to, to turn this into a giant, massive ten song list. Yeah, and I'm gonna do this list a little bit different. I'm gonna rate it a little bit different than I rate our normal song, the nor like when we normally review music. So it's gonna be ten. It's gonna be booze. Ten booze. One out of ten booze. But usually booze are bad, but not 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 but booze. not not for Halloween, not for spooky, not for how spooky does the song make me feel. That's what I am judging this these songs on. Not how good of a song they are, but all of them remind me of Halloween. But it's going to be how spooky are they as well? The spook factor will be taking it taken into consideration. Yep. Go check right. out our song too, "Demons and Desires." It has a Halloween name, at least. Yes, it has a Halloween name, it has a Halloween cover. It's not truly a scary song. We have a couple songs on uh, the new thing that we're working on that could be considered a little um, jarring. Um, Drinking and Works, one of them. Dottie is a little, you know. There's some spooky vibes. Yeah. Uh, All right, so. This is a little, has some ghost guitars. So, John, what order? Do, I don't know what order you put put all these in. So, um, if you look at the texts, that's the order it's in. The I like went, at the um, order. No, you're number one, and then my number one. You're number two, and then my number two, and then so on. All right. So I want to. I'll start reading this list. Ready? All right. So we're gonna start off our list with a song that I love from an underrated album, "The Jeweler's Hand." By Arctic Monkeys. It's yeah. a song I picked. It reminds me of Halloween. John, why don't you tell me what you think? So, uh, just real none of these songs are going to get any bad grades, I don't think. Um, no, I don't think so either. No exception. Uh, crazy bass tone. Keys and bells are incredible in this song. Guitar works perfectly placed. Um, vocals are as gloomy as Alex ever gotten to that point in his career. Uh, lyrics are like the you know the staircases in Harry Potter that keep moving when they go in different rooms. The shits of yeah. that's how the lyrics are. They just keep winding you around different ways. Um, and lastly, the drums are just fucking incredible. Uh, overall, this album's a Halloween album. Um, even though it has humbug, it it's is. humbugs like bah humbug, but um, it's I don't have a single bad thing to say about it. It's a great song. Eight point five out of ten. Okay, so this song on its own to me is so good. So what really struck me about this song as a song and really all of Humbug is the rhythm section. The, just the bass and the drums on that album are so good. And this song is just like a, a stampeding herd of elephants. It's so good. Like it, this, this album is more of a feel album to me. A lot of Arctic Monkeys albums, I mean, maybe this one more than any, you have to really deep dive the lyrics, but this album has such a mood. It's like the moodiest album ever. So as soon as we had this idea, the song popped right in my head. Mm -hmm. The the bells with the mixture of like the aggressive, like dirty, cruddy bass really make me feel like Jack the Ripper's like around the fucking corner. Yeah. Like I, I love how evil this song has always felt how like uh, Edgar Allan Poe it's a, it's felt so mm-hmm. as far as spooky rating I gave this song a 7 because the song's pretty fucking spooky 
And so as far I, as its I, normal rating, just the normal rating, I give the song an eight point eight. Yeah, it's a, it's a credible song. Oh yeah, that you know what I I would say my my boo rating, I would give it six boos, six and a half boos. Yeah, and see, it's up there. It's like I mean, it just starts off. The first line is fiendish wonder. It's the first thing he says. Yeah, it's great. All right, so uh, that was your first pick. So we the way we did it was I, he texted me five, I texted him five. So now your first pick. So this was the first song that came to mind for me when it came to because I, I I you know you we could have just went we could have just did ten we could have just did the humbug album or we know, honestly could have just done the humbug album. Um, but so I to change it up a little bit. All right, Matthew, tell him who I picked. All right. Yonkers by Tyler the Creator. It's Tyler's Creators, uh Tyler the Creator's breakout song. Um I'll start off. I reviewed this song. Um, as a song, I actually really like this song. I always loved the beat in this song. And it kind of makes you feel like it's like the beat's almost like accidentally a great beat that they played in reverse. There's just something about the samples in this song that work so well, and it's really, really crisp. And I really like the way the bass lays too at like certain parts, you know, when the bass kind of falls. That's my favorite part of the song. Um, yeah. Boom. I love these. These were lyrics at the time when they came out. They actually did feel controver- controversial, which yeah. is something that doesn't really even happen anymore. And this song's what, like only nine years old, I think. But um, I like this song a lot. I gave this an uh, eight out of 10 normally for spooky rating. I feel like if you're including a music video, it should get a 5.5, but I gave this a five because the song does feel kind of evil, but the music I don't feel like is as, as Halloween-y or as booish or spooky as maybe some of the other songs on this list. Really? Yeah. All right. So this is my take. Scary production as soon as it comes in. That, that... <laughs> See, I don't find that. I don't really think that that's that scary to me. I mean, it doesn't make me go, ah, but it's a creepy. No, sing- you're lying. I've heard you watch. I've heard you uh, listen to this song. So scary production, scary little. It sounds like, you know, scratching. Uh, the 808 is incredible. Uh, the scratches in the chorus that. I love that. Like Beastie Boys vibes. Yes. Uh, they're so. They they're violent. They're it's a violent sound. Uh, the lyrics are so unhinged, funny and dark. Um, this would have gave people a heart attack in the seventies. Um, and that's yes. one of the reasons I love it. Regular rating is a seven point nine out of ten. Um, and a boo rating, I'm gonna give it a seven. Same as Humbug. It's it's. The lyrics alone. You rated it are, higher than Julie Chan. You give it a six point five. The uh the lyrics alone are really disturbing. Like Eminem level. They are yeah, they are pretty disturbing. You're right. MF Doom level disturbing. I can't say some of the things he said. They're they're too violent and brash. Brash. All right. So next up, a song of my choosing. John, what did I what did I pick? Uh, this is called Monstrous Clock by Ghost. Monstrance. Oh, Monstrance. I thought it was Monstrous. <laughs> like, oh, I'm a goat monster. No, it's Monstrance. Oh. That's like an evil London clock. Mm. I said it's pretty on the nose as far as Halloween goes. Uh, chorus and post-chorus solo are fucking cool. Ghost is so interesting to me. Uh, and I bet this kills live. The outro is really cool. Uh, the song itself to me is a 7.3 out of 10. And the boo factor, I'd say it's a 7.5 out of 10. So, do you real quick, John, while I'm going to give my review, Google what a monstrance clock looks like. <laughs> it's <laughs> I didn't actually know what it was. It's actually really fucking freaky. Um, so... I immediately thought of Ghost as well when we were thinking of songs that reminded us of Halloween. I could have really picked any of the songs I like from them. 
and it, and they could have been Halloween songs. Cerise would have come to mind, but Monstrous Clock just feels like it should have been in a horror movie. It, it, it kind of feels like it is a horror movie well, in and of itself. Yeah. So this whole song's about him being him being uh, like a Satanist cult member, and he's recruiting other cult members or like a cult leader. Cult leader. He's like the reincarnation of like a dead pope. Um. So for the boo rating, I'm gonna give this an eight point five. Um, the song is just like for the actual song rating, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a uh, seven point five. But for think... the spooky rating, like for this being a song that like I would listen to on Halloween and go, this is a fucking Halloween song. Definitely in the eights. Uh, definitely eight and a half. I think Ghost as a band, their boo ratings like a 9.3 their their boo rating is really high um i just the song itself is pretty like there's see, really to me that's why water. it's like it's it's like um like my favorite horror movies and my favorite things that are kind of scary aren't and that's like traditionally yeah. scary you know my my nightmares probably wouldn't scare other people i was thinking if you that. if you if you we're in a cult meeting with a bunch of Satanists and they were listening to this song by Ghost. You'd be freaked the fuck out. You go, this is horrifying. Listen to this go, religious chant. Say, you know what I would say? I would go, you know what? This is pretty on the nose for you guys, but <laughs> um, Yonkers by Tyler the Creator. Put that on next. If you guys really want to be scary, scared. I'd go, no, 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 no. And I go, you too, too edgy. Before. All right, so moving on. Next song's my pick, Matthew. Who did I pick? What did I pick? Fall from Grace, Future Islands. So the song um, is weird to me. I give yep. the song like a 6.5 out of 10 on like just as a song. Um, It's a creepy song. It's not as creepy as some of the other songs on the list that are coming up. Um. It kind of reminds me of Halloween and like I'm stranded on an island kind of way. In the future, and a fo- yeah, in the future, and like it's really foggy. Like it's not necessarily Blade Runner kind of creepy, but it's not. I don't know. It's like um, all their songs make me feel lonely. Mm. Future Islands, so it like it, it has that element too. Like for a boo rating, I'm I gave it a six. It's it's one of my least favorite songs from them. So. I'll say I used to skip this song on the album until remember we seen them live. Yes. Until they played this live, I skipped it. And then I got a real appreciation for it. Um and I think it's I we there's probably they probably have creepier songs too. They're creepy boys. Um they probably do. Yeah, Tin Man's pretty creepy. Tin Man's pretty creepy. Um but um I love the guitar in this song. It's probably their best guitar song. They don't have a lot of guitar in any of their songs. They don't. Um, so it's probably their best guitar song. The bass is incredible. The bass is, is insane. Um, the keys are from space and the lyrics are from the swamp. Um, Sam's, Sam Herring's vocals are just a heart stopping. That scream uh, is unmatched. Um, I love this song. It's a love song from a ghost. I gave it an 8.8 out of 10, the song itself. And the boo rating is probably a a 6.8. I can get down with that. That lead up until the scream. I would say the scream is is pretty horrific. Yeah. It's a pretty horrific scream, for sure. In a good way. All right, so next up. My pit, one of my picks. Enter Sandman by Metallica. Is it your turn to go first or my turn to go first? Uh, I go first with yours and you go first with mine. So, uh, it's maybe the coolest metal song ever. This is a good pick, wasn't it? It's a great pick. Everything about this song is impeccable. It's not my favorite on the list, but you got to give it its respect. It's monumental. It's a 10 out of 10 song um uh, and guess what uh 
Boo Factor is is in the sevens. I'm seven point two. It's a fucking kind of a creepy song. It's a creepy song about scaring children at night. <laughs> yeah, it is. Or about cocaine. I don't know, but either way, yeah, it's a creepy fucking song. It's a fucking awesome song. Um, the uh, everything about. It, I mean, the guitar work is just <clears throat> so good. I transcend genres. You know what I mean? It's a ten out of ten. So I definitely agree as a song, 10 out of 10, full stop. I also thought of Halloween. The song really, really reminds me of Halloween. Um, It's been played every Halloween that I've been alive for. Um, The video is creepy. The middle part is, is really creepy. The guitar tones sound like evil fucking church pianos. Like it's such it's such a great cool song, spooky factor. I give it uh, the the uh, boo rating. I totally give it an eight out of ten. Um, great great song. Yeah, everyone should go check out Enter Sandman if they're in a spooky mood. All right, next one is one that I picked. Uh, Matthew, you tell the people what it is. She does the woods, the last shadow puppets. Oh my god! You thought I was going to pick it out. I'm gonna expect. No, 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 no. If so, so let's or let's just right off the top. Last Shadow Puppets have about 15 songs. It could be Halloween song. Yeah, or James Bond songs. They could be both. They could be both, which is incredible to say, but it's it's just it's the truth. She does the woods. It's probably the most on the nose. It's like a Witcher Halloween song. It doesn't. It reminds me of like an old story more than anything. Do you know what I mean? Like an old story that they turned into like a kid's story that used to be terrifying. That's what this song reminds me of. She'll jump in the river. You'll wish you're the water. Like, oh, it's so good. The whole thing is so great. Um, I'm a last shot of puppets, Mark. I give this song a nine out of ten. Um, This album may have four tens on it. Yeah, so it's, it's hard. And so there's, there's better songs on the album than this. Now, the reason I everything you come to expect to me is a 9.7 for like a boo rating for a spooky rating, because that song just has all the stops. It makes you feel like there's like Halloween vines and witches cauldrons around the corner. This yeah. song, the song makes you feel like you're like you're in the Harry Potter movie. Mm-hmm. I feel. But like, I feel like it's like the uh, seventh every, or eighth movie, like more mature. Yeah, when they're all adults, I, you know what I mean. That that's 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 like it's not like you know they're not getting on a magical train. It's like they're lost in the woods, and there's like, well, I'll tell you what I think. Um, well, my spooky rating for this is an eight point five. Yes. Hello again, Alex. Uh, smoothest song on the list. Uh, I love the cricket keys. That's what I called them. Uh, the background vocals are outstanding. It's like a Scooby fucking do song. Sorry. The chorus is beautifully done. Strings are out of this world. And the lyrics take you on a trip. Uh, so vivid that you can hear the leaves crunching. Um, it takes you into the middle of a seance. Uh, I gave it a 9.10 uh, as a song itself. And spooky rating 8.4 out of 10. So almost identical. Yes, yeah. I I don't think I I think that uh when it comes to like that album, I don't know if we'd have any disagreements. I don't think I really don't think we would. Um all right, moving along. So you can't have Halloween any any Halloween season without witches being involved. You got to yeah. go with um, the world's number one living witch, Stevie Nicks. Mm. The song Rhiannon about a witch uh by Fleetwood Mac. Uh that's my pick. So I guess you go first. Um Fleetwood Mac Rihanna. So first of all, I thought it was on rumors when you first put it and I was no, like it's on Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, it's on before that. Um another all-time classic song. Um maybe that, Steve- that album that album has two tens, John. Yeah, it does. That maybe Steve- landslide. best vocal Oh, it's great. The guitar work is insane. The background vocals are incredible. What else can you say about it? Another perfect song, 10 out of 10. Uh, and the boo factor. Um, 
they have scarier songs, but we did rumors. We I did do about, rumors. What's the final song on rumors? Oh, is it Gold Dust Woman? Gold Dust Woman might be a 10 out of 10 boo. Um, you know what, though? It's hard to say because there's like some, you ever, there's like a band when I this was song, younger, I heard yeah. and they literally just made chainsaw music with people screaming in the background. So that's a 10. Yeah, that they was, don't make our fucking list. Yeah, fuck them. They didn't get, you know, they could kiss my ass because in real life, they're just fucking skinny guys. With they're chainsaw. just a dickhead running a chainsaw next to a microphone. Yeah. Uh, this is incredible. I think the boo factor is in. We'll give. I'll give it an eight point five out of ten. All right. So Rhiannon is a landmark song. Yes, I love Lindsey Buckingham's guitar on it. It is just so great. The bass playing on it, everything about the song is tremendous. It's a classic pop writing, dream masterpiece of a song. The song for me gets a, gets a ten out of ten. Uh. Boo Factor, I feel like it's the ultimate song about witches that you will ever find. Yeah. And considering that this is like basically a whole entire subculture of people, this is like their national anthem and they are a prominent Halloween culture. I'm giving this a 9.5 for Boo Factor. Um, Because if you're going on Halloween influence, the song might beat every song on the list. Yes. So this might be the biggest Halloween song on the list. Um, great song. Love Fleetwood Mac. This so I've actually been listening to Landslide a lot lately, mm. and I was like, "That's right. These are both on the same fucking album." Incredible. They have another uh, great song on the album. They have a couple great. That's a great album. Now we're moving on to another a personal favorite. Not nearly yeah. as possible, but a really, really great song. Hudson Vampire Weekend. So I'm gonna review this first. So as a song on its own, I love the song. Mm. The experimental bass in the song, like just all the different sounds that Rostam programmed in this song were just Incredible. insane. It makes like, you... it Yeah. It sounds like an old timey song that glitched its way into the future, like Assassin's Creed one style through like some random time machine. It's the only way to describe the song. The song basically describes the guy Hudson, who who the Hudson River's named after, killing himself, and he just he hallucinates, and even the harmonies, the harmonies make it sound like Ezra's being possessed. It's just so so tremendous. This is my highest rated spook factor spooky factor song that we have. This for me gets a ten out of ten on spooky factor. And a nine out of ten for a song. All right, so Hudson by Vampire Weekend. Sorry, that was a mouthful. I just I fucking I love know. this song. Uh, it's one of my favorite songs ever. Uh, it might be my favorite on the list. Every time I listen to it, I hear something new. The drums, along with that ticking clock percussion, is just. Uh, I get chills thinking about it. The chorus is. One of the most haunting melodies I've ever heard. Over and over again, all these never ending visions. And it's so mad. It's so as if, like, you know what I mean? Like, like, it's just, it is like, he's just, it's like it already happened. You know what I mean? What it's his, like, he's the ghost haunting the fucking river. He's stuck in time thinking about that melody. That's how I feel when I listen to it. Um, all the different keys, the production of the actual song. Um, it's a perfect Halloween song and a perfect song in general. 10 out of 10 song and a 10 out of 10 boo factor. Awesome. Yeah. All right. I so did. you're going to have that song. So my last one, my yeah. last pick on the list. Closer by the Nine Inch Nails or Nine Inch Nails, whatever. John, what do you think about "Closer" by Nine Inch Nails? I thought this was a, I thought this was a pick that you would be like, "Oh, cool, great pick." This was a great pick, a wicked song. One of one of the most provocative songs ever at the time, um, and definitely one of the most provocative rock songs. Um, production is bar none, and of course the lyrics are basically the weekend's whole career. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, by the way, though, the the song never strikes you as sexy. It's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> um, yes, yes, it is. Especially the more it goes on, you you know the only you know what I think about when I hear the song. I think about like fucking worms in a pile. Yeah, it's a terrifying song. It's, it's uh, and also you got to say it came out in ninety five or ninety four. Mm-hmm. They love Zoo TV and nineties U two. There's no way you make this song and not fucking listen to Zoo Ropa and fucking Octung Baby. It just doesn't happen. Um, I agree, but it's a great song. Eight point four out of ten for the song, and a boo factor is it? It's the ten out of ten. It scares the piss out of you. The song. <laughs> All right, so you said most of the things I was going to touch on. So yeah, closer by Nine Inch Nails, great song. Um, if you're looking for shock factor, this is your song. This song has always been the most animalistic song to me, and this song goes well with any gore. It's like a gory song, almost in a way. Like yeah. it's almost gross. Like you don't you feel kind of sticky when you listen to it. Mm-hmm. Um. But it also feels very mechanized at the same time because of all the like hardcore like disco house EDM shit that they have going on. Um, Trent Reznor's a great, great songwriter. I give the song an 8.7 out of 10, so very close to your rating. Boo Factor, I give it a 9.7 um, for me. It's just a really, it's just a hell of a song. There's yeah. not really a lot, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like you just have to listen to the song. It's it's really, really well written, too, musically. Mm. There's all different sort of time signatures and like fun shit that happen. And I really do. I think the lyrics in the song are great because, you know, like humans are primal creatures. And this is an emotion that very few songs ever tap into. So I will definitely say it's a special song, too, as well as a really good song to play at an adult Halloween party. Or maybe you play for a bunch of like a ten year old's Halloween party and just leave, see what they do. Yeah, I seen a funny meme. <laughs> just a, <laughs> maybe laugh really hard. I think I texted it to you. I te- now I just text you the memes because you don't go on Instagram. But um, it's you ever you know that uh, what's the what's the movie with Ben Stiller and uh, uh, Vince Vaughn? They're playing do- oh, dodgeball. Dodgeball. Football. Yeah. You know when they come out as the Cobras? Yeah. <laughs> it was playing it was playing that like, you know that man and then I care about like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were playing that Pine <laughs> Grove, whatever the fuck. Boy, yeah, me and the boys busting our last move before we put all the silverware and Tupperware in the microwave and leave the party. <laughs> yeah, that was really <laughs> funny. Was just so silly. I loved it. Um before we get to the last one, I have some honorable mentions that I was thinking about as we were talking. Um, so I'm okay. gonna say them now. Uh, the last, sh- any last Shadow Puppet song, really. Um, and later Arctic Monkeys. I mean, Golden Trunks pops right into my mind. Uh, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. The song is mm-hmm. creepy. The Ultra Cheese. John, John, I had to throw it in at one. Sure. That, yeah, that, but, like that, like I should have picked or you should have picked. Hotel California. Oh my god, it's terrifying. That's a that's a ten. That's a ten point ten. That's a Cross. ten out of ten. Boo and uh, it you know. Oh my god, we should we sh- we you know what we got to do Matthew. We got to pick. Uh, we got to do some top tens, and one of them has to be like best guitar solos. Oh yeah, and it's definitely in the. I mean, we, we got to do a top ten. We, we have to do it. A- We'll just put our favorites. We have to do 10, 10 underrated guitarists. I don't know if I could name 10 because I think everyone I like besides you is pretty popular enough. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I was thinking like, oh, yeah, I mean, I guess they're popular, but like they're not really a lot of people aren't really talked about. All right. So I got some uh, the strokes. Call it fate. Call it karma. Oh, yeah. That that that's a boot factor. It's pretty high. Um, Where No Eagles Fly by The Voids. Oh, I love that song. A lot of The Voids are pretty creepy. Um, Because by The Beatles. Oh. Yeah. I know. I don't know. Uh, Where I Nobody... 
Where Nobody Knows by Kings of Leon. Of course, Thriller. Medicine by Nick Wooderhouse. That's a very creepy song. Yeah. Good Night Travel Well, The Killers. Mm. Yahe by... Yahe, yeah. It's a creepy album. Uh, Where Is My Knife and I'm a Vampire by the people we're about to talk about. About Heart Shaped Box, Nirvana. Heart Shaped Box. Baby Faced by U2. And there's a song called Aha by Lil Dirk and King Von. And the reason why it's so creepy is because it came out after King Von was killed, talking about how he's going to kill somebody that he killed already. So that's a yeah, that's a ominous. That's, t- that's a little too real. Yeah, it's a very ominous song. That's a boo factor, ten out of ten. Walk like an Egyptian. But like I said, the band we're about to talk about might be they only have one album, and every song's terrifying. It is. This is the song is called Nighttime. By the amazing Snakeheads. Matthew, tell them what you think. All right. So this is basically if Iggy Pop had a son that was in a band that was like a Satanist. Yeah. It would, or like just some sort of dark, fucking really darker version of Iggy Pop. Nighttime is such a great fucking song. Right away, you think about vampires. You think about prowling through the fucking streets. You think about evil things. Think about ripping people apart. You don't think about anything other than going ballistic. Um, I fucking love this song. I really, really, really love this song. It sounds like it was recorded in a closet or like like in the middle of the street with someone's cell phone. Like it's (laughs) it's like. It, but it's such a great song all around and like it, it taps into that same thing that the Nine Inch Nails song taps into like this primal energy that that yeah. is at the undercurrent of your life that um, sometimes in music like this sometimes that's when the music brings out the deeper emotion whereas like with like the jeweler's hand it's like more of a, a lyrical like, whoa, I can't believe I just figured out what he meant. That's amazing. What he's trying to say there is great. Yeah. This song is one of those just primal. It's like deep in your chest. You feel this fucking song. So Nighttime, the Amazing Steakheads gets a 10 for me. I fucking love the song. Wow. It's a perfect song for what this is. It's a perfect song. Oh, wow. I don't know if I, I don't know. It's a bit bold. That is pretty bold, but it. But I haven't. I hadn't heard it for everyone. I listened to it and I reviewed it, so I was like, "This is a ten. This is so fucking." That's an good. emotional ten, but it, but it stands because it really is. Foo factor is is. is uh, I don't think anything in the instrumentation is. No, the the weird, screaming sounds in the background, in the yeah. song. Oh, it's a ten. Yeah, it's a ten. And so then, this, I'm gonna give this a straight ten. Even the sliding guitar, which really doesn't have a lot of effects on it, just in the context of the song. I gotta rate this a nine. I'm sorry. Wild. I gotta change it. Yeah, you can't it's not I a can't rate this above Rihanna. No. But so it's, it I'll give it an eight point nine. Um Nighttime by the Amazing Snakeheads. It's one of the most important songs to me as a twenty two year old. Uh even with Metallica, Future Islands, Nine Inch Nails, and Tyler the Creator, these guys might be the scariest sounding. Uh, they couldn't even bother to play to a click track. One of the rawest songs <laughs> I've ever heard. Vocals are crisp. The song will turn you into a monster. It's the perfect outro to this list. It's an 8.5 as a song, and it's a 10.10 boo factor. Um, and they have scare. It's a nine point. No, it's a ten point ten boo factor. They have songs that go past a ten on the boo factor scale. They have a song called "I'm a Vampire." They have a song called "Where Is My Knife." Where is my knife? Where is my Where's my knife? knife? Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's so These funny. guys are fucking. They're the real. I'm I gonna listen to that when I get Chipotle. They have a song called "Jesus Freaks," and Think it's fucking this. great. All right, John. So we we got three minutes left. So we got two minutes of bullshit. So oh. I hit in other news. Before you say that, I want to yeah, stay on yeah. music real quick. 
If you did make it this far, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. Please follow. Please do everything you can to support us. We're not asking for any money yet. So uh, just just give us your attention, please. Uh, and if you think we missed something, besides something super obvious like like Thriller, um, comment it. And then we'll, we're not like, we don't say comment and we don't actually look at the comments. We look at the comments. Uh, so we'll, reach we'll out. respond. We'll, we'll converse with you. And we'll talk about it. Or maybe we'll put you on the, the fucking podcast. Yeah, uh, why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, so please let us thank you for watching. Um, here's the list. Matthew, what were you going to say? I'm sorry for cutting you off. Just uh, we got uh, two minutes left on the cheap cheapo free version of Zoom. It's two minutes of bullshit. So I hit my squat record. That's gangster. Which is still low as fuck for a guy. But 205. Oh, I squatted. Good. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. It's not too not not too terrible. And I broke even more impressive to me. I broke my plank record. So oh, I yeah. did two minutes and ten seconds. Wow. Which was exhausting. But it was it yep. was fine. It was it was I good. Don't... I don't think I've ever even went that. I I don't know if I tried, but when I was in like real good shape, I don't even think I did that long. I think I did ninety every time and then just stopped. Yeah, I just go. I just was like, I'm gonna go as long as I can go. That's so that was fun. That was fun. There was something else I was gonna tell you that I forgot. Oh, dude, Mr. Robot is such a great fucking show. So is Peaky Blinders. There's so much Arctic Monkeys and Peaky Blinders. Oh, yeah. and also, this is big news that 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 we usually don't talk about on the podcast. It looks like Will Ospreay is going to sign with AEW. Get the fuck. Where'd you hear that? I just saw it on the Twitter right before just we uh, logged on. I would love it. Well, his, his, his like stable. Expected. His Expected. Stable there and uh, so are. Uh, he's in the Don Callis family. They just put Kyle whatever in there. I like how he's in the Don Callis family, but since he's technically a faction leader, he's like still a shade above all the other guys. Like he's I in the should... family, but he's a little bit more powerful. Like, see, I could see him screwing over Don Callis, like and going babyface. He should be. He should be above all. But like tweener. I just thought in my head. You know, it just popped in my head. In your head. After Sting retires, of course. Yeah. We want to send him off on a good babyface thing. Um, Darby Allen gets recruited by the Don Callis family. That would be cool. I was thinking, um. And Jack maybe Patterson. maybe Jungle Boy. Who do you oh, think? Listen, everyone, go drink Jesus's favorite beer, League Island Brewing Club. Who do you think's in the mask? Oh, I I hope it. I saw someone say CM Punk. That'd be rad. That would but, be great. But would Jack Perry Punk, would be cool. Perry, I don't want it. It has to be someone. No, bigger. one of the guys. If it was one of the guys, if he was yeah. one of them, I don't know. But you went to the show at the league at the uh, League of Course Center. The Lee Core Center, so that that was fun. Yeah, it was cool. Rampage is good. Ric Flair came.